Meet Odessa Paloma Parker, a vintage-loving Toronto-based stylist and the newly appointed fashion editor of The Globe and Mail. I sat down with Odessa to talk beauty, style, New York Fashion Week, and of course, vintage. So as the fashion editor of The Globe and Mail and a stylist and you have events and all that going on, how do you manage to keep looking well and feeling well? Uh, well, I'm pretty low maintenance in the beauty department, uh, so I feel like that kind of relaxes my routine a little bit. It gives me wiggle room to answer emails or do whatever else I need to do in the morning by having a very minimal uh, beauty routine. Um, one thing that I do really try to do is make time for sleeping. <laughs> I, I nap on the weekends and I try to get a good night's sleep every night just because that's so important makes you feel good and if you feel good I think you look good um, and another thing uh, that I really try to make time for are little kind of pleasurable things like getting foot massages, pedicures, manicures, facials, like just those little nice things that you can do once in a while. I'm definitely not a like once a month facial person but I think if you can carve out a little bit of time for yourself in that way it, it makes you feel really good and you also obviously leave looking really nice as well. Is there a specific salon you like to go to or a specific type of facial that you like? Um, I really like Lush and Lavish on Ossington. Uh, they have some great services. Uh, they have a really great foot massage. Um, it's half an hour. You just go in. You do a soak, um, and it's it's just so nice. It's a nice little treat, um, especially if you know you're like me and you're at a photo shoot. Um, so you're on your feet all day, or like I just came back from New York Fashion Week, and that is like on my list of things to do after hoofing it around New York for eight days. <laughs> what were some of your favorite beauty trends walking the runway from New York Fashion Week? Um, well, everything was looking quite minimal, which was really interesting. Uh, very much my uh, style. I felt really bad for the beauty editors I know <laughs> going backstage trying to like check out what was happening behind the scenes because there wasn't a lot. Um, but I really loved what Anna Sui did. She had a great glitter eye, uh, really in keeping with her kind of psychedelic, uh, vibey um, garments. Um, and I also really loved the Peter Somme, just kind of really bright electric orange uh, line in the eyes. I thought that was really fresh and really pretty and something that everybody can achieve um, in their own way and, and uh, is subtle but still adds a nice little pop. Do you have a go-to beauty look for your big meetings or big events? Uh, usually, if I'm going to try and step it up a little bit, I'll, I'll wear some BB cream. Um, but other than that, you know, just like a nice slick of gloss. Um, you know, and, and just a really nice bright eye that's kind of my uh, my kind of go-to standards. Usually because I'm deliberating what I'm going to wear for so long, I end up leaving very little time for <laughs> hair and makeup, so it's got to be quick and fast. Who is your vintage beauty icon? I really love Jerry Hall. I think despite the fact that she was present in such an excessive and super glamorous time, she always still managed to look quite natural and fresh. Um, I think it's because her hair was always quite undone for the most part. So even though she had a lot of metallic or frosted makeup going on, she still didn't look too overwrought. She always had a little nice element of, of naturalness and um, I think that's really special. I, you know, I sometimes look at uh, the style icons or the it girls of today and um, you know, they always look very overdone to me and I just think it's so nice to have some beauty icons who managed to keep things looking minimal and natural and fresh, but still participating in that world, still looking um, to trends or what was happening at the time period and just making it their own. Um, and since you're you're more a minimalist person, what is your take on beauty trends now with all the stuff going on with YouTube, beauty sensations and things like that? Do you feel like beauty is headed to a more creative place of expression or do you think it's headed to a more conformist place? I think, you know, if you look at a trend like nail art, that's sort of like a little glimmer of self-expression trying to burst through. But, you know, from my conversations with makeup artists that I know, um, you know, when they do a wedding or they do somebody's makeup personally, it's very much about, like, make me look like this person, make me look like that person. Um, you know, Kim Kardashian leaps to mind immediately. But yeah, I think if you look at somebody like Alexa Chum, like, she does an eye makeup tutorial because people want to do exactly her kind of eye makeup. Um, and I think that's great. I think it's nice to emulate people's styles, but I think, you know, um, for me, because I don't wear a lot of makeup, I'm much more interested in the artistry of it and how it can change you to look more interesting as opposed to more beautiful. You know, the way David Bowie would wear it or the way Lord wears her, her dark purple lipstick. Um, I think that's quite interesting and, and a fascinating process. Um, so yeah, I kind of wish that people were maybe focusing on, on the unique 
qualities of, of makeup artistry a bit more than trying to completely replicate what everyone else is trying to do. And you work with a lot of vintage in your styling. When was your love for vintage born? Um, probably in high school, um, as soon as I could start going downtown, I'm from the suburbs of Toronto, so as soon as I could start going downtown, uh, my friends and I would always go to Kensington Market, um, and I still love Kensington, it's one of my favorite neighborhoods for, for vintage shopping. And I always, you know, just really admired uh, the style of people from, you know, the mid-60s to the mid-70s, so I'm, I'm really attached to that style, so again, I think that's really um, what I gravitate towards in terms of my personal style, so obviously vintage is sort of the way to go in that way. What role has your love for vintage played into your work as a stylist and an editor? Uh, well, I know a lot of people who own amazing vintage stores in Toronto, um, so as much as I can support them and, and get their merchandise into an editorial or a market page that I'm doing, I love to do that. Um, or, you know, if an interview opportunity comes up, obviously I love to speak to them as well. They're all independent business owners, which is a really great story to tell. Um, and I, I just think it lends something special when I'm doing editorials, especially it's um, you know, a, kind of like the, the icing on top of, of a really beautiful piece if you can get some really interesting jewelry or really interesting accessories into the shot. Um, it just lifts it and enhances it. And it's not the same old stuff that you're seeing in every other editorial as well. You know, the same Celine piece or the same Dior piece uh, that everyone else is going to use, the it pieces of the season. If you can kind of mix it up and add some vintage in there, I think it keeps things actually looking quite fresh. And how does beauty play into your work as a stylist and an editor? Uh, how do you work with a makeup artist to conceive an idea? Where do you look to for inspiration? Uh, well, again, because I love, uh, you know, the sort of psychedelic era, mid-60s to mid-70s, that is where I draw a lot of my inspiration from. So. Um, I have a Pinterest account, so I'm always trying to find interesting um, beauty stories or editorials from that time period. Deanna Vreeland obviously um, came up with some great concepts, so she's always a really great um, resource for inspiration. Um, and I think, you know, in terms of beauty and, and fashion going into an editorial, it really should be uh, a nice harmony. So from my point of view, when I'm looking at um, whether it's a trend-based piece or whether it's a mood or a feeling that we're trying to evoke in an editorial, I really like to speak with our art director, uh, the photographer, the makeup artist, and have them sort of inform me about what they think would look best, um, whether it's staying really close to the theme or maybe doing something a little unusual and different and sort of turning it on its head. Um, I find sometimes doing that uh, and keeping it a little sort of incongruous makes the most interesting looking editorials. What is the best beauty or fashion advice you've ever received? Um, good question. Uh, I think for beauty definitely my dad was always like you don't need to wear makeup so um, I obviously didn't heed that advice for much of my adolescence and was very insistent on wearing as much makeup as humanly possible um, but now I've kind of gone back the other way but uh, I think just in terms of the whole thing of fashion and beauty just being true to yourself um, you know I know in my business uh, I have to be conscientious of trends um, but it can be just as simple as finding a vintage version of what's happening on the runway or incorporating um, some really unique piece into the mix so you don't just look like um, somebody who walked out of the pages of a magazine necessarily. You look like yourself and you look confident and happy and um, you know I think the emphasis should be on you feeling good about what you're wearing as opposed to feeling like um, you look appropriate or cool to people. I think you know it's about satisfying yourself at the end of the day. And in that vein, what is the biggest beauty risk you've ever taken? Why was it a risk and did it pay off? Um, I shaved my head in high school, but that was kind of an accident. Um, I was uh, going to Coop Bazaar to get my hair cut and um, I went in one day and I had had my head, uh, like my hair dyed and um, I wanted to kind of grow out the dye, so I asked for it to be really short and they ended up shaving it, uh, which was fine, it was the 90s, so it was cool, Yeah, it was okay, um, but you know, being like a, an awkward teenager in the suburbs with a shaved head, maybe not 
the way you want to thrust yourself out into the spotlight. But uh, it worked out. It was fine. Luckily, I, my head is like in okay shape. Yeah. <laughs> so it was all right. It was Did fine. you pair it with some vampy lipstick just for 90s I, effect? I did. This was when I was really heavy into like, you know, going to the MAC counter all the time when you went to the mall with your friends at lunch. So yeah, I'm sure there was some like purple lipstick, some blue lipstick, some frosted red. So there was probably a lot of 90s happening all at one time. I'd love to see the photos. <laughs> Thank you so much for agreeing to sit down with us, Odessa. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here.